G'day guys, welcome back. What we're gonna do in this step is we're gonna install our terminals. So we're gonna get these little bad guys and install them onto the speaker cabinet. So I think it's pretty obvious. The reason why we've got speaker cab um, terminals is so that we can have electricity flow in from the outside, so via an amplifier and go inside the speaker cabinet, go through the crossover and up to the um, tweeter and uh, woofer. This is a bit of a fiddly step because we've got to hold really small parts. You'll see, um, You've got these little small nuts, you've got to hold it from within the side, the speaker cabinet. But we're going to go through it together, and um, by the end of it, they're going to be installed, and I think you're going to be pretty stoked. In terms of speaker terminals, you can actually um, call them binding posts, you might have heard that as well. They'll come in different types. You've got ones that have got clips on them, so it's like a little clip with the wire in, and then you've got ones that have a thread and a threaded clamp. These ones are way better, they allow us to get good amount of pressure on them. And you can also so put your wire through the hole in the binding post, or you can use something like a banana plug or a spade on a speaker terminal, which is also really nice as well. You'll notice on the back of the speaker cabinet that you've got four holes. The reason why we've got that is that so that each circuit, so the woofer circuit has a set of binding posts and the tweeter has a set of binding posts. This allows us to do bi-amping or bi-wiring. I personally think bi-wiring the whole way to time because you know I, I can't hear a difference. You've got two sets of cables, so like yeah, sure, your uh, resistance will be dropped a little bit, but you know, so small. What I do think is a good idea, by amping. So if you want to buy amp, you can say, put a, a solid state amplifier on the woofer section, and then a tube amp on the tweeter section. So you can get a really warm, um, high frequency sound, and then something that's got a lot of drive and control can go on the woofer section. So for this step, what we're going to need is we're going to need our speaker uh, cabinet that's all fully varnished. It's all ready to um, be assembled. So make sure you're not doing this with um, you know, a speaker cabinet that hasn't been sanded or anything yet. You need to have your varnish ready and finished in that, in that sense. Then we're going to need our 7mm spanner, an Allen key. You might be thinking, why do we need an Allen key for this step, but you'll see. You're gonna need your fully finished crossovers with the terminal soldered on there, all the tags on there so you know what they're um, denoted for. So the first step is to take the crossover the part. So just take the, all the parts off. You'll notice that it's held on by a nut at the back. Take that off. I highly recommend that you put all these parts into a jar or glass or something because yeah, they just seem to want to roll and go somewhere other than, um, <laughs> other than your workbench. So make sure you got that. Because we've got to install terminals from the outside and I've got to use my hand on the inside, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is use this bit of um, back panel to glue it onto a bit of MDS there to show you guys what happens on the inside. So the first step is you're gonna get your clear washer, put that onto the centerpiece, make sure it locks on, you're gonna get your top hat, and this top hat goes into the back onto into that hole. If it's a little bit tight, you can just get a little hammer and knock it in. And then get your threaded rod and clear washer over there like that. Then get your cable connector and put that on. Then get your nut and chuck that on like such and then wind it in finger tight. Then get your Allen key and place it through the hole. And then get your seven mil spanner, put that on the nut and wind it. I wouldn't go any more than uh, three times, but two to one and a half times is really enough. So that's tight already. One thing I do like to note is I like to have my holes vertically aligned like that. So that way it just looks nice and it allows us to have speaker cable going in. If we have it on that way, it can be a little bit clunky as a speaker wire, got to go like that. So we're going to have four terminals in total. We're gonna have reds on one side and blacks on the other. You might be wondering why do we have four? Well, we're gonna have the bottom ones here are gonna be for the woofer, so we're gonna have red, black, and then for the tweeter up here, we're gonna have red, black. That allows us to do bi-wiring or bi-amping, um, but what we'll uh, do if you're not gonna do that, we're just gonna bridge them with a piece of wire so that we can connect the um, circuit to both tweeter and woofer uh, crossover parts. This is the speaker cabinet I'll be demonstrating on. So, this speaker is actually an American Adler um, with rounded edges and I've bleached it so it probably looks a little bit different than the birch plywood that I was doing before. I'm only going to do one speaker terminal at a time so that way I don't get all the part confused. Let's start with our positive terminal first. So get your wire that says your positive terminal. So I've got mine, mine says terminal plus for woofer section. So the first step what you're going to do is you're going to get your threaded rod, you're going to get your clear washer, and this locks on by the way, so make sure it's locked on. And then you're gonna get this little top hat. Remembering, we don't need this bit here. This um, red washer, we can throw that away. 
get your top hat and place it into the hole. We're gonna be working at the bottom. So the woofer at the bottom, tweeter at the top. So down there. If this is really tight, you can just lightly tap it in with um, a hammer, but mine's pretty good. And then get your threaded rod and clear washer over there, like that. Now we're gonna get a nut and we're gonna get our terminal connector, making sure that we're connecting the positive lead. Do not do this with the negative lead because this is our positive terminal. So make sure you're working with the positive. So I'm gonna look at my tag and I'm gonna make sure it's positive. So I'm gonna double check it and go terminal plus woofer. Okay, I've got that, that's right. So you're gonna put that on like that. What I like to do is hold it like that, with one hand and place it over. This is really fiddly, so be patient. You will drop it. If you drop it, just you know, pick up the nut and do it again. Once it's on, I just wind it in from the outside, make sure the nut goes on. Okay, so I just get it finger tight. And then what you're gonna do, you're gonna get your spanner and you're gonna put that onto the nut. That's really funny, you can't see anything. <laughs> so you gotta do it by feel. <laughs> your fingers or your eyes in some sense. And what you're gonna do, get your Allen key and put that through the hole on the outside of the terminal. So that hole there. You really don't wanna do this too tight because you're gonna, if you go too tight, you're gonna snap your binding post. So I do two revolutions. So one. Oh, I'm getting to one and a half now and that's, that's more than enough. So I'm happy with that. Remember, you, this doesn't need to be super tight. Um, it's just so that when we wind this down that it doesn't spin and making sure you get the right color on there. So I've got my red. Perfect. And then now I'm going to do my negative. That's a bit better actually. Makes it a whole lot easier. Get your thread of rod. Then get your clear top hat. Placing that on, make sure it locks on. Then get the black top hat and place it through the hole at the bottom. Then placing your threaded rod. Get the negative terminal uh, wire. So I'm making sure I got it right. Terminal negative woofer, perfect. Then get your nut, perfect. Now that's on. Get the Allen key, place it through the hole. Get your spanner, place that through the cabinet onto the nut and just rotate. So on this speaker cabinet, what you see, I've got the reds on this side, blacks on that side, and then on this speaker cabinet, I flip it. So the blacks on this side and red on this side. The reason why I've done that is I think it's just a nice touch. You know, when you look from behind, it looks symmetrical. And it's also something that you won't see in like manufactured speakers. So mass produced speakers, because they're mass produced, they'd have all the terminals on the one side. This is just a nice touch to sort of, you know, define detail that shows that these are handmade. All right, so that's a wrap. I've put all my terminals on for both my speakers. Go do the same, um, enjoy the process. I'm sure you're gonna drop the nut a couple of times like I did, but um, just take your time. And uh, once you've done it, go to the next video and uh, we'll link back up and we'll start assembling the speaker.